Hi, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, welcome back. If you've been here before, wild sheep on the trail and a massive pack on my back. I'm up in Dartmoor near a place called Oakhampton. Did a wild camp last night in an absolute legendary spot. I've been down in this area for about five days now. This is my second wild camp. Did another one over at Fogging Tor Quarry. We've enjoyed some fantastic hikes. One very sketchy one and some amazing car camping spots. And now, to be fair, I'm kind of on my last leg of the trip. It's going to be sort of today and tomorrow, and then I'm going to have to head back to Leicester. So I thought we might do something a little bit special today, as it's been predominantly moorland the whole of this trip. Let's check out these sheep following me along. <laughs> I thought we'd head out to Exmoor and to some coastline and see if we can see some oceans and nice cliff faces into the sea. I've got rumours on the park for night app that there's a really good car camping spot up there. So I figure what I'm going to do is hike 20 minutes back to the crib, sort of my gear out and take a drive over there and see what we can find. Well, I can see the roof box in my car. I hope it's okay. It's always a worry leaving your car when you go wild camping. Saw some car pull up near it last night and then bumble off. So I hope nothing's been done to it. Well, the crib's looking good. Well, I gotta say, check this out. This is a little observation post that the army use, mate. This is pretty interesting. Obviously, like they flip these hatches open, use your binoculars and whatnot, and uh, purvey the landscape because you're doing all training here with live firing and stuff. And <laughs> this is a bit mad. There's a stables at the back. I'm not sure they use horses anymore, but they used to use horses up here. I've been told for like clearing out the livestock. Um, before they start doing operations and maybe hunting for a little bit of ammunition that may or may not have been dropped. Got a relay antenna here for signalling in and out. And yeah, a pretty tidy little thing. Apparently this one's number 15, I've been told, which means there's at least another 15 around, but pretty cool little find. But more importantly, I think we need to get on the road, mate. It could be a long journey, this one. The roads around Devon are not friendly. A lot of single tracks. I'm going to tell him it's about two hours, so uh, I'm going to get the kettle on, get a few bits together, and get on the road. Let's do it. Game on then, let's go, let's go. Right, this could be interesting. It's 51 miles, and it's going to take two hours. Just in case you was disbelieving. <laughs> I kid you not, 140 man for 50 miles. Game on. Not gonna lie, we've had it pretty good so far. We've got 18 miles left to go, and I think we're in the realms of bagger bob roads, mate. They're not too bad. He sees high edge roads, man. You can't see anything that's coming. Most of the time, it's just about wide enough for two vehicles, but hard work, man. The old Devonshire roads, you know. Well, here's one then. Check it out. Little corner chip off a freaking mirror, man. Some freaking balance gone mad speeding by me I've had to go off into the bush and he's just 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 clipped my wing mirror he nearly went into the edge row as well I hope he's damaged his freaking car what a bell end to be honest that is look of the gods mate that ain't just had that smash into my freaking window mate well just checking it man because uh I don't know how lucky I was really lucky it's just scraped it man oh my days even the geezer behind me was like, yeah, the guy was a nutter. Right, let's keep moving, let's keep moving. Whoa, this is opening up a little bit with the views fine. Look, look at this, this is nice. I'd say moorland, but it's not. It's more farmland, isn't it? Exmoor, wow, damn it. I really thought I was gonna end up getting to the spot without going down any dumb ass roads again, but I guess not, man. I've got like six more miles to go and I've got a feeling most of it's gonna be like this. Wowza. Hard work. I really hope this spot's going to be worth it tonight. I'll show you a little bit on park for night. All the reviews about it are brilliant. It's Jesus. Oh my God. Hang on. I'm not sure I can get over this bridge. What am I doing on this road, man? Trouble is, you follow the sat nav. And once you're committed, Jesus Christ, you're committed. There ain't no turning back. <sighs> Okay, apparently this next road's a normal road. 
Eight miles to pull up, you know, you know. It's kind of where we're going. Oh, friggle-tastic. Yeah, anyway, this spot tonight, apart from night, everyone says it's wicked except for one dude. So he couldn't find it properly. And uh, he ended up going up some mental single track private road where he had to like really difficultly turn around. Sounds like the roads we're on now. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed. Ah, oh, wicked, and I'm a proper up on Exmoor now. Just over, crossed over a cattle grid and we got sheep, shiznick on the road and on the trail. All right. This feels good. I like this bit. Yeah, this is nice. Let's see where we're heading towards. See, these are the moorlands, man. Beautiful colours. We're heading towards Lynmouth and Porlock. I'm hoping, I'm not sure whether tomorrow to do Porlock or Lynmouth. Both of them look absolutely spectacular view-wise. And it's going to be a tidy little coastal sort of hike. So, for now, we're sat down being optimistic, man. So, in about 10, 15 minutes, we're nearly at the gig. Right, from what I can gather, we're looking for some dodgy little turn off like this. You yeah, mean? Don't look too bad. A little bit of a dodgy entrance. We'll take a time, you know, you know. Ooh, mama. Dude! Wild ponies. Yeah, baby, this is the spot. Right, I'm gonna park up. Just gonna say. 100% bagged it, mate. That was a wicked little move, dude. There's no one here. Like, yeah, you, you don't really know because it's not obvious, but, and it looks a bit bomb chuffing. Home it is. Wow. Not a bad spot for the final night of the trip, mate. I'm going to enjoy this one. Oh, yeah, man. Right. Might get a bit of on. I don't know. Let's see what I'm going to do. Well, stunning views all around and blue skies and next to no wind whatsoever and I couldn't resist doing a bit of alfresco tonight. I don't know who he is, but yeah, that's what we're doing. I do hope we get away with it though, because you know, I've got a tour bus going by me at the minute. It's a bit of a weird road, this man. It's like, it's a country road into the middle of nowhere, I guess, but it's coming down to this Portland Weir or whatever it's called down here. I don't know, but more importantly, the feed for tonight. We're splashing out. Full guns are blazing, no we're not. Tin of corned beef, baked beans, onion, and well, I was gonna do fried potato with it, but I'm not. I'm gonna do mashed potato with it. So yeah, mate, corned beef hash, man. Old school, I'm gonna love it. This little bad boy out. I was worried about the horses down the way. These seagulls are gagging to sneak a bit of my food, you know. They've been buzzing around as soon as they see me put some out. Right, onions prepped. I'm gonna chuck the corned beef in, mush it up, and then beans and that after you do, you do. Mate, dude. <laughs> this is not cool, man. I gotta be quicker. Oh no, I just realized it's one of these blooming cans, isn't it? Which way are you supposed to go? It doesn't tell you, man. Is it that way? I don't know. That's the way I'm going now. Wonder if I'll get all the way around. You normally don't. Dude, we did it. More importantly, or more worryingly, Seagull, 12 o'clock. Fucking hey, dude, they're gagging. Oh, let's get in the pan. Whoa, look at the lord on it. Yum, 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 yum. Right, I got to somehow mash that up. Oh, that's gonna be hard work, isn't it? Right, give me a minute. Doing it alfresco, proper style, you know. I mean, you know, horse poo and God knows what everywhere, but yeah, man. I gotta be honest, you know, like of all the rank foods that my old man Jones used to make me eat, like faggots and liver and onions and stuff. Yeah, corned beef, man. I don't mind it. It's quite nice. I'd eat it raw, bro. It's corned beef, isn't it? Yeah. Bit of raw onion now. Right, I really don't want to overcook this. I kind of should have put the onions in first, but um, it's gone to that kind of mushy consistency. Eh? So, in with the beans. There's no way I'm eating all this, mate. This is enough for about two, three people. And I'm gonna do mashed spuds. Oy. Look at that, that's pucker, isn't it? Thing is, if you don't know corned beef hash, what you would have done normally is have this like in a Pyrex dish, if you like, put it in the oven for half an hour and put some mashed potatoes or sliced potatoes on top of it. But yeah, it's just good old hearty food, mate. I'm watching ya. Damn you, man. 
Here we go then. Booyaka shack! I'm stoked with this, mate. Ah, corn beef hash with onions and beans, you know, you know, and a bit of cheesy mash on the side. And what's making it even better is full phone signal. And you know what? It's England versus Hungary tonight on TV, isn't it? So what the heck, mate? I'm living the dream, you know, you know. I'm going to munch up and chill with the football and watch the sun go down over that beach coastal view. <sighs> mate, and there's no one around, man. Silent. Just me and the horses and them damn seagulls. All right, catch you in a bit. Proper wild ponies, man. Hey. Proper ex more ponies. <laughs> what a spot. Oh my days. We found some good ones, but... I mean, this is pretty special, isn't it? Well, time to set the crib up then, but I've just got to say, mate, absolutely loving this roof box. Without this roof box, mate, this trip wouldn't have been possible. It would have been an absolute nightmare. Wouldn't have had the alfresco table, which is in there. All the wild camping gear. And here's a really cool one, man. I'm using it as a place to store all the rubbish bags. There's about five rubbish bags in there. I haven't seen a bin that can put a rubbish bag in the whole trip. So being able to put five bags of rubbish up there that are absolutely stinking and not in the car is epic. Right, let's get the crib set up. Boom time, crib set up. I'm ready for a little bit of chill vesturing, you know you do. Which is what I'm gonna do. One last cup of tea and the last bit of uh, TV. And I've got to say, football, all my days. 3-0 to Hungary. Seriously, the last four games have just been an absolute nightmare. I don't know what's going on with it, guys. You gotta sort it out, mate. He's been playing like not a two bit side, but he's been testing loads of players out, hasn't he? And <laughs> it ain't been working. Four games, you know what I mean? And we lost 3-0 to Hungary. <sighs> We're out of this nation's league, innit? But it don't bode well going into the World Cup, does it? Anyway, cup of tea and a bit of bed, and I'll catch you in the morning. Oh, I appreciate it's pretty dark in here. I'll tell you what, I've got to get out of the crib, mate. It's about 30 degrees in here. It's sweltering. But, mate, look at the day today. It's absolutely blazing. I've got to get some breakfast on and quick. Whoa, 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 whoa. Holy shiznick. Stop, stop. Fresh coffee. Ready? Oh. Smell that fresh coffee. Yeah, man, you know. Busy like Sunday morning. Whoa. Well, the belly's full and the crib's about ready to rumble, but I've got to tell you, mate, this one is definitely going down as one of the legendary spots, and I'm definitely going to be using it again. Not only have we got insane views, but also it's in a bit of a prime spot. You've got Dunkery Beacon over the back, which is the highest point in Exmoor. You've also got Weber's Point, and then down the way you've got Minehead with a real nice beach. And also, only about 20 minutes that way is where I'm heading for today, Lynmouth. It looks like it's got some sick-ass coastal walks and views all the way around it. So, let's not mess about. Let's get on the road and get on over there. You do! Know, what a day, mate! Ah, let's have it. Gotta say as well, as I'm leaving, check this out, man. I mean, we're sat here, like, looking over the Bristol Channel here. We've got Swansea on the left and Cardiff on the right. At this spot, it's got to go down in the top five, isn't it? Right, next spot, Limburg. Let's go. How's our pain display? Damn, it looks chocker. All right, we've got a spot, let's have it. Right, let's go and find out how much this thing's going to rob me for and hopefully find a toilet. Honestly, the reality is a car camping. I don't really, really need a poo, but I've got to tell you, that tin of beans in that corned beef last night 
There hasn't been a 10-minute spell since 9 o'clock last night. It's 1 o'clock in the afternoon now since I've not laid a massive ripper. I woke up this morning, honestly. The car stunk, mate. I was literally choking in the car. And I need air now because I can still smell it. I've got to find a toilet. I've got to be quick. All right, game on. Oh, mate, I'm absolutely buzzing for this one. I'm not going to lie. This whole trip's been fantastic, and it's not just been the locations and things we've done. I think more than that, the fact that like I've managed to live out of my car for a week, it's just been epic, mate. Coming back, organising this stuff, moving on to the next adventure. Yeah, it's been top, mate. Right, I better check this trail out, because about six different ways I can go. Pulled a bit of a fast one with a paying display again and all, didn't I? It was coin only, man. I only had enough coins for like two hours. So I seen someone leaving, man, and got their ticket, which gives us an hour and 35 minutes to do four miles. It's supposed to take about two hours, so we ain't messing. Hey, check this out. Tiny little town and all that, but crowds, man, people. I think it's about the first time in a week I've seen like a proper place with a decent amount of people. I'm not liking it. I need to get on a trail quick. Ooh, look at me with infant uh, internet connection on the trail. Well, St. Mary the Virgin, don't you know? Paris Church reconstructed in 1891 by Sidlin and Wilson, whoever those are. But with a 13th century tower, that's that bit on the right. And then it says the remains of the rebuilding works undertakes in 1741. On the south side over there. Happy days, inf, you know, let's go. <laughs> Mate, I'm bossing around real quick. I feel like one of them tour guides on the coaches or something, you know what I mean? Right, here we are, we're at the viewpoint, everybody get off the coach. Take your photo, five minutes, we're back on the coach, we're going again. Ah, oh, mate. Not a bad little spot though, eh? <laughs> oh, I think I'm going down this way as well. It's all pebble beaches this way up, isn't it? Someone was saying the only decent one's mine, Ed. It's beautiful though, isn't it? I think we're cutting back up this way. On the way back, it cuts back around, so... Let's head on to the next viewpoint, did you know? Ooh, Valley of Rocks, mate! I'm not being funny, from the pictures we've seen, mate, it looks pucker of armor. I just hope that the trail up there don't get too boggy, because hey, you can, we're going raving tonight. No one thought about going hiking. So we'll see how we go with that. Ooh, and as if by magic, timing of the ninja. We got the old little tramway thing going on, Malarca. Imp, I don't know, it's a tramway, man. We're in Lynmouth. I don't know what they use it for. Take a tourist to the top of the hill that's too lazy to walk up the steps by the looks of it. I don't know if it was used for anything else in the past. I gotta say though, as tramways go, it's nice, but I do like the one in Hong Kong, mate. That's a spectacular tramway. From what I can remember, which is very little, it's not actually on Hong Kong Island. It's on one of the adjacent islands and it takes you up to some mad sort of Buddha temple area. Pretty cool to be fair. I used to know a dude that lived in Hong Kong with his wife and uh, I was in Thailand at the time and I just bumbled over there for a week to see him. Mate, Hong Kong, wow, what a place. I do remember, and <laughs> I won't go into too many details, but I remember going, because he lived on Lancun or Kowloon or something, which is one of the other islands. And at night, like me and another dude that was there just visiting went over to Hong Kong for a night out. Needless to say, it was a bit of a wild night and we didn't make it back to Kowloon that night but instead I just remember waking up in the morning in a room with some gal and having to leave quite sharpishly and when I came out of the room I came down the corridor and there was a lift I got in the lift I came down the lift and as I come out the lift I was on the street in Hong Kong I was like what where what I was pretty hungover and worst off I couldn't remember the name of the island my me, me mate lived on and I needed to get a boat back to it. So I ended up like walking down towards the water. I had no idea where the harbour was. Talking to a taxi guy who spoke no English and told me to go right and instead I went left. About 45 minutes later I saw the harbour and a newsstand which had some news about the island of Kowloon which jogged me memory into the name of the island and the boat I needed to get onto to go back to my mate's house. Hong Kong, one week. Oh hee, what a buzz. Woo, we got gates, we got gates. Oh, what? Oh mate, that's a bit. What? Oh, that's technical. I've never seen one like that before. We don't have them in the city, you know. Does it lock itself? 
pretty good. Eight out of 10. Just thinking, you know, like, yesterday was really, really needed. This trip, as I keep saying, amazing, you know, you know, but it's been hard work, man, everything, doing it all. Every day, like, bomb off the mountain from a wild camp, get in the car, bomb, let's go hiking. And yesterday, just lit like down to the crib, a drive over and a real nice chill for the evening with a good meal. It was exactly what I needed. I think if I'm gonna start doing these longer trips now, that's what I need. I need a middle day where I just recuperate, I think, revitalize and get the energy levels back up. But hey, what a sick trip, mate. If you ain't seen the other videos, go check them out, man, it's been a legend. Oh, I'm liking this. I think this is just kind of like the entrance to it, but the old valleys of rocks are style you know <laughs> looks nice let's see what we got and get around the corner not very funny it's not a bad little spot for a wild camp is it you could pitch your tent there mate a little bit close to the edge you know but uh i think you'd be all right <laughs> you'd have the views wouldn't you you know you do <laughs> here's one jump rail there but see that liam brown causes a little bit of controversy with his uh south downs trip man where he pitched out like two foot from the uh the bark cliff edge i love the dude big respect you know you know he does he does good stuff man but uh yeah certainly uh livened up the facebook pages and all that for a few days eh oops oh and you bop around the corner and boom shankar Ta -da -da. you get all that mate that's nice isn't it that does look a pretty sick shot hang on need an insta wow I think this is about the point where we turn back but given more time i would have a scramble up there but check this out there's a road you can drive through the valley of rocks just means we got more to explore the next time we come down here on the next trip you know you know right let's start heading back i think we've got about 45 minutes to make it let's see a couple of spots on the way as well i think got a nice perspective for the scenery behind me now we're just wondering about wild camping around here i don't know if you get away with it would like to do a wild camping next more just take another you know area of natural beauty or whatever they are national park off the list this makes me keep thinking about peak district now it's driving me nuts really want to get up there one night and just do a wild camp but well iffy about leaving the car man so i figured i'll probably end up just doing one in an area we've known already or been to before because i know it's close you're leaving the car there but yeah really want to bag a wild camp in the peak district sooner or later ah oh, i gotta say I'm proper stoked I've mixed it up on the last day, getting off the moors and whatnot. I saw this trail on the trail app before I left. It looks a nice little trail, real picturesque. I'm glad I've done it. Right, I've managed to get some supplies, man, so I think I'm gonna bumble a little coffee together and then head up to the next spot. Weber's Post, no doubt. Let's get up there. Boom time, Weber's Post, somewhere behind me. But mate, oh, check the sky out, blue skies and blazing. It's well nice, can't believe I'm wearing actually black to be fair. But check it out, June's Day, big shout out to AD Bird, mate. Nice one, legend for sending this in the mixes. Check him out, man, I'll drop a link for his Instagram where you can see his mixes. Also, here's the thing, dun, 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 dun. mate, check these out. I hope you get a shot of them. These, are oh, my Sinbad pants and mate these have done thousands and thousands of miles they're like Thai sailor pants if you like all the guys over there that are out on the boats and stuff they wear these trousers they're freaking legend mate they're the most comfiest pants you could ever imagine they've been all around Southeast Asia yeah this pair look <laughs> look how beshaggled they look they've actually been stitched up at points because they fell apart I'm still wearing them mate they got memories, man. Me and the trousers, bonded. Mostly to me skin, because they're that old. But there we go. Oh yeah, the trail. Check this out, we're following something a little bit different. It's a National Trust Trail that's just up on their website. And as I'm showing it you now, at the end of it, I'll click the map, and that means now I can't see the details of where I'm supposed to go, because I've got no internet connection. So I'm having to watch that on a video slowly to see where we're going. But more importantly, I wanted to use my National Trust membership card, didn't I? Better get in. And there's no pay and display. It's just a free car park that the National Trust owns, so 
I don't even know where I'm going to use this thing. I've used it once. I'm going to have to start hunting areas out and places I can use it. Hey. Right, let's have a look where we're going so we don't get lost. I'm going to end up getting trail anxiety here, you know, not being able to follow the trail. But, mate, that's a nice looking little chill spot. And check this out. Boom. and the weather today oh it's just going hand in hand to make a perfect day mate it really is awesome said it a couple of times so i'm genuinely happy that i've like bumbled over to exmoor for a day or so could have quite easily stayed on dartmoor and done something else over there but to see a bit more over here this side and the coastline yeah stunning mate what a trip what a day got a couple more spots after this one as well <laughs> gotta say it I'm a little bit lost, but fear not. If you've not tried them from Midler, boom shanker. Nibble on your nuts, tropical style. Still the best you know you now. Right. I think I half know where I'm going. That's the thing with it, isn't it? You should never get lost, really. You should always just be able to follow your own trail back. But I'll tell you what, man. After that hike in that Everglade, or that glen, or whatever you want to call it, that dense forest the other day, there's no way I would have been able to follow my trail back. I remember one other time as well when I couldn't follow my trail back. Back in Phuket years ago, decided to go to Phuket, took a taxi and buses and all that, got to some hotel late at night, and then went out and got absolutely wasted. Couldn't remember where we were staying. Ended up walking the streets for hours until we sobered up and accidentally walked past the hotel where we were staying. Yeah, and then recognised it. So yeah, it's not always possible to follow your own trail back, is it? <laughs> oh, wow. Check this out. I thought this was just some random wooden hut, but oh no, we've got imp. I reckon this thing was originally constructed in 1897 to mark the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Victoria, mate. And it says from here, you've got panoramic views over the ancient Homer Woods, mate. The ancient Homer Woods. Pretty sweet. Well, back onto what the National Trust thing's calling the easy trail. There's supposed to be loads of like wooden sculptures around here. I haven't seen a single one, but uh, I think what I'm going to do, yeah, it's like a two minute walk back to the crib. So I think what I'm going to do is get back there and then fez off to this Dunkery Beacon. I'm not sure if it's in a woodland area. I'm hoping you can get a view from up there, but I guess we'll find out. Oh, well, this ain't good. Yeah, I'm still hearing it, man. Do you know what that noise is? I've just turned around on this road, man. Oh, now I've got a dodgy noise on the wheels. It sounds like I've got a bit of a flat tire, but I've not. There is sticky stuff on the tire. Maybe that's what I'm hearing. I'm a bit power off. I don't want to get buggered up with a car like now when I've got 200 odd miles to drive back to Leicester. Oi. It's going to happen at some point, isn't it? We're going to have a disaster with the car. And because I'm such an amazing mechanic, Oh yeah mate, it's going to be well interesting isn't it, you know. Mate, look at this spot for a view and a car camping spot for the night. Whoa, legend eh, we like this one time. Right, let's get on the trail. Oh well the tyres look alright for now and they've not gone down so worry about it when we have to. I was thinking though, that Weber's Post man, a bit of a snarf from on that. Even the National Trust didn't know nothing about it on their website and they own the place apparently, but uh, you know, it was on the map so we went and seen it and yeah, ticked it off the box. But this one, oh mate, Dunkery Beacon, boom shanker, the views are big licks already, you know. And I think once we get to the top, in the sunshine and all that, we might get some even better views, so I don't know, half an hour uphill let's go wow not even halfway but the views are fantastic and a bit of a nightmare check the trail man cuts well far up this is going to be a right yomp i had no idea <laughs> looks like something at the top though i don't think it's a triggy but it's getting a slap and tickle holy crud just realized as well two things we haven't done on this trip we haven't slap and tickled the triggy, and we haven't found a squeaky gate, mate. Dartmoor, Exmoor. Sort your stuff out, you do. I will say, and I'm deadly serious on this one as well, because a couple of you have mentioned it on comments, if you're out and about, 
and you find a decent squeaky gate that you think you can play a tune on, grab a what three words location for it and drop it to me. I'm making a list and at some point I'm gonna publish a UK worldwide squeaky gate list for people to play on. What three words locations all over the UK with musical gates for you and I. Legend, huh? So drop me your locations and we'll do it. I'm not at the top yet, but I'm feeling this place, man. Oh yeah, ocean down the way. I know ocean, it's the Bristol Channel, but you know what I'm saying, big old slap of sea or water. Minehead and valleys down that way. We're having a moment. I've been blessed, you know, this week with the weather. And I gotta say, you're sitting there now watching the vid thinking, mate, that guy's out there car camping, I could maybe do that. Yo, <laughs> seven days, mate. Get out there. Just one night, have a blast. If I can do seven nights, you could do one night. I'm not gonna repeat myself like I do on all videos, but grab the park for night, find a decent location, a hike can happen the way you go, mate. Summertime, ain't lasting forever, is it? Get out there, get a sniff of it. And do it car camping style, man. And then you're out there for the night, living it up. Oh yeah. Right, let's get to the top. It's looking a big, fat, juicy one, isn't it? Can't wait to get me paws on that. <laughs> oh yes, a slap and a sneaky little tickle, you do. sort of moment, perfect sort of area just to kick back and reflect over the trip man. It's been amazing, you know, two wild camps, crazy hikes, good hikes, amazing views, good people, even cooked a bit of good food, you know. I should end it here man, it's such a legendary spot but I can't, we got one more. Let's get down there. Mate, game on then, as the final destination of the whole trip. Oh, just check it out, smashing now, you know. Down to Minehead and Minehead Beach. A couple of reasons. Someone said it was a nice sandy beach down there, the only one in the area. And also because I've never been there before and I've heard loads about it over the years. Tidy man, it's all built up for tourism, the old salt rock surf shop. Selling the old sup balls and stuff. Loads of little boutiques, cafes, restaurants, and Booyak Shack, the beachfront. All right, oh, and fish and chips. I mean, you always need fish and chips on the beachfront, don't you? All right, let's find a little spot. It'll do. We're in, we're in, we're in. Yeah, baby. Check it out, man. Dude's kite surfing. Wicked, mate. It's been years since I did any of that and I was never great at it, I didn't do enough, but I've got some old kit, man. Might bag it out at some point, would be nice. Right, let's check this out. Ah, oh, boom time. Minehead sort of beach area. There is an area around here, just down from the Botlins where you can park overnight, 10 till six, but uh, oh wow. It's not too shabby, is it really? Let's have a little wall bosh up. Mate, that's nice. Could go for a swim on a warmer day. I'm not today, and I know you're thinking I was gonna, but I'm not, because it's cold and windy as hell. And that looks a bit brownie, to be fair, don't it? It's the Bristol Channel, man. It ain't the Maldives, you know what I'm saying? And it's blowing like a pummel after a bag of sprouts, you know, you know. But it is an absolute legend of a tastic spot to end what's been a spanking trip mate to be fair i've got an optimistic sat nav telling me it's a four hour drive back to leicester but i know in reality it's going to be about six hours or maybe not that long if we can't find a petrol station but as for now i really really hope you enjoyed this one if you did all the good stuff hit the like button subscribe to keep up with the series and definitely hit me in the comment love reading those and as always you know you know take it easy Enjoy the camp. Get out there, it's summertime, and stay stealthy. All right!